time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What My Line, brought to you by New Stabet, America's leading spray deodorant. Now with its anti-immunity factor. Poof, there goes perspiration. Now let's all play What My Line. And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left tonight, a young gentleman who is simply adored by everyone who watches afternoon television five days a week, Mr. Robert Q. Lewis. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. Incidentally, Dorothy, a wonderful story on you. <clears throat> A wonderful story on you in next week's TV Guide. Oh, let me see. Right over here. To my left, you will notice in one moment that our Miss Arlene is missing tonight. We're sorry about that, but if I were asked to name my one favorite gal in the world to take Arlene's place, it would be the lady to my left. Kukla and Ali's favorite person, and ours too, Miss Fran Allison. And on my left, Kukla and Ollie's favorite publisher and mine too, <laughs> the guiding genius of Random House, Bennett Sirf. <laughs> Miss Arlene, but gee, it's nice to have you next to me. Thank you. <laughs> well, on my left, just over his election night vigil, still panning a bit from his extra exertions, our distinguished panel moderator, John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. It's Sunday night, and we're up to our old tricks. We have some very nice folks with interesting occupations. All of this meant to give the panel some trouble, and I think we'll do it tonight. Later on, we'll have a famous guest challenger before the panel, but right now, I think it's time for the experts to meet the first challenger whose line has to be spotted. So would you sign in, please, ma'am? Iris. Iris Blitch, is that right? Yes. Is it Miss or Miss? Mrs. Mrs. Blitch, and where yes, are you please. from? I'm from Homerville, Georgia, and I've brought you the most famous product that we have outside of the Okefenokee Swamp. That's gum turpentine, Mr. Daly, and I'm sorry I didn't bring all of you a bottle, but my luggage was a little <laughs> Well, thank you I very much. I brought you a baby alligator, but it would have been a little uh, well, awkward uh, to have done that. Oh, I'd love don't to have drink a baby that alligator. Here, John. I won't drink that here, and I just hope the panel uh, pays attention to the fact that this is gum turpentine. I won't help you a bit, see? <laughs> now, I tell you what, Mrs. Bitch, would you walk down so that the panel can get a little closer look at you, please? Walk down in front of the panel for me. Well, how do you do, Mrs. How Bitch? Do you do? Hello. How do you do? How are you? Hello, Miss Blitz. Hello. Nice to see you. How do you do? Hello, there. All right, Mrs. Blitz, will you come over here now, please, and join me? And as you may know, the panel, because they have had a chance to meet you, have seen your handwriting, heard your voice, get one free guess as to what your <laughs> line may be, and we begin the free guesses with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. I think she's a paper hanger. A paper hanger, Mr. Lewis. Well, Ben is going to hate me for this. Miss Blitch is from Georgia. I believe she raises Georgia Blitches. Ooh, Miss Allison. I think uh, Mrs. Blitch uh, teaches elocution. Mr. Sir. Well, I can't say what I think the relationship between Bob and Mrs. Blitch is, but I'll let him guess it for himself. I think Mrs. Blitch probably works for Coca-Cola. No, I'm afraid not. Nobody has it right. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mrs. Iris Blitch. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is, but the panel will have to guess. Do you know how we score this here operation by flipping these cards? I surely do. Well, that's great. All right. Mrs. Blitch is salary. Let's begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett, sir. Mrs. Blitch, your occupation elicited quite a lot of applause. Is, is it a popular kind of occupation? Yes, I think it is. <laughs> Does it, is it performed for a profit-making organization? No. No? That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mrs. Blitch, do you then work for some form of government? Yes. 
Uh, would both men and women be interested in what you do? Yes. Is your work kind of fun? Yes. Uh, is it something that a man could do as well as a woman? Yes. Are there men doing it? Yes. Does it have anything to do with the federal government? Yes. You're employed, you get your paycheck from the United States of America? The United States of America being a large entity, I would say in this issue, we'll have a small conference. Thank you very much. <laughs> can't take that long to give me a no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, do you work somewhere other than Washington, D.C.? Somewhere other than Washington? Yeah. Uh, two down, date to go. No. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I can. <laughs> Actually, uh, I think we are going to rule a no answer on this because this is the main assignment uh, area that we have to take consideration uh, of by with, for, and which. No, well, I can't give you a maybe. I, I think you'll understand why in a bit. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Lewis. In that case, Mrs. Blitch, might we assume that you did the major part of your work in Washington? That I did no. Uh, oh, I think sure I would get a yes on that. When did that last train go? Why wasn't I on it? Actually, I think he was using the verb in the presumptive sense, that when you are at your labors, you would do, that you would then perform them, the major portion of them in Washington. I was just asking a simple question. <laughs> yeah, I know. I wish it had been, too. Involved. I think we can give him a yes on that uh, in terms of... Uh, the general uh, copacetic-ness of the Casuda friends, you see? Oh, now I understand. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Lynch, does your, work, does your work have anything to do with either the House of Representatives or the Senate? Yes. It does? Yes. Uh, are you then, perhaps, in the employ of one of the members of, the, of, that, of those organizations? No. You well, that makes it three down and seven to go, Miss Alice. Uh, is the work that you do uh, uh, indoors... Yes. Uh, is it always in the same place? No. No, not always the same place, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Bletch, I was interested in your saying you didn't do your work in Washington. Might I possibly take a guess that you were just elected to something on Tuesday? You may do anything you like. Well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Your stolen would be, Mrs. Blitch. <laughs> I presume you were elected to something on Tuesday. Oh. Right? Yes. And you're going to come to Washington when the new Congress goes into session. Yes. Is that right? <laughs> well, you were elected. <laughs> uh, which house? Well, I don't know she isn't a senator, so it must be the House of Representatives. That's absolutely right. Mrs. Congressman Iris Blitch from Homerville, Georgia. And it's great fun to have you with us. I'm sorry we didn't really knock them on the head. <laughs> I must say we took a little presumptive evidence here because Mrs. Blitch has been elected to Congress. We answered the questions in the light of a congressman's duties. I trust you will all accept this as a proper modus operandi. I what are we going to do, fight City Hall? <laughs> fight City Hall, we cannot do. Well, Mrs. Bitch, thanks very much for being our guest, and I do hope you enjoyed your visit as much as we enjoyed having you. I did, because I'm a Democrat. Well, <laughs> <not that. laughs> The nice thing about America is that both all of us can be happy being Democrats or Republicans. But now let's see what we can make out of the panel. Let's get us another challenger. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Ruby? Ruby Warren, is that right? Uh, is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Warren, and where are you from, Mrs. Warren? Muscomania, Washington. I beg your pardon? Muscomania, Washington. Mus Muscomania? Right. Muscomania, Washington. Well, you have come a long way. I must say it's nice to have you all the way from Washington. You nervous? Not much. <laughs> well, you don't have to be nervous. The panel would like to uh, get a closer look at you. Would you mind walking down in front of the panel for me, please? May I ask you one question, Mrs. Warren? 
Uh, where is Muscamania? Is that near the coast? It's Scamania. Scamania, yeah, is that it's, near? It's the Scamania County, just east of about 40 miles to 50 miles from the coast. Thank you. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? All right, Mrs. Warren, over here now, if you will, and sit down next to me, and uh, we'll let the panel see what they can do with one free guess as to what your line may be. And we always begin those free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's a dancing teacher. A dancing teacher, Mr. Lewis. Well, being from Washington, perhaps you're in charge of the recount vote. Ah, <laughs> Miss Allison. Uh, I think uh, Mrs. Warren operates a salmon uh, cannery. Mr. Sir. I think maybe Mrs. Warren does something to stop all that rain that hits Seattle all the time. Uh, no, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Warren. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. Panel's got to work. Mrs. Warren, you know how we work this dingus here in scoring, do you? Yes. All right. Now, Mrs. Warren is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with um, Dorothy Kilgallen. Do you work for a profit-making organization, Mrs. Warren? No. Now, that's one down and nine to go, Mr. Lewis. You do not work for a profit-making organization. Yes, Mrs. Warren yes. does not work for a profit organization. No. Uh, is there any possibility that there is a product involved in the work which you do? Yes. Yes, there's a product involved. There is a product. Uh, this product that perhaps might have something to do with the state of Washington. Could it be native to, uh, does it grow in, in that area, perhaps? There's two questions. That's, uh, in the general area of the questions, uh, which are very broad, I think we could admit a certain indigenous nature, don't you think, Char? Yeah. I didn't quite understand. <laughs> Uh, this then is a product, uh, <coughs> you said it could grow in that area. No, in the, in the whole area of your questioning, which was very loud, broad, native, did it, could it grow, be yes. native, etc. we gave you a yes to the whole area. Mm -hmm. uh, is it perhaps uh, something that grows wild in different colors? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's right, yeah, it does, yeah, sure. I pass. Oh, <laughs> Miss Allison. Uh, now I know that it's variegated, don't I? Well, anyway, do... Would this product be found in the home? Yes. Is it a product which would be used by both men and women? Yes. Is it a uh, product uh, which is supportable rather than yes. stationary? Yes. Might it then be found uh, in one room of the house more than any other? Yes. If uh, this were a two-story house, would, it, would I be more apt to find this on the second floor than the first? No. No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. I I'm a little puzzled, Mrs. Warren, because you said you did not work for a profit-making organization. Uh, am I correct? in saying that you do not have any kind of a government job. Are you correct in saying that Mrs. No. Warren does not have any kind of a government job? Mm -hmm. It's a very good question, and it gets it's no. <laughs> Read out put it the wrong way. I got trapped by that government once. I'm going to get back to the product. Uh, is this product um, a product that moves around? Yes. Does it have legs? No. No. <laughs> Four down and six to go, Mr. Lewis. When you say moves around, do you mean that it, uh, it, it, it lo lo com locomotes itself? Yes. It does. Well, that throws out what my theory was. It has no legs. Does it perhaps uh, swim? Yes. It does swim. Well, that's wonderful country out there for fish. Do you have something to do perhaps with the, the fish industry in general? In general, in a very general way, I think we might say. Right. Yeah. Now we must find out what uh, particular fish. Let me see. We've got a lot of tuna out there. Would it have anything to do with, uh, with tuna? No. That's no. five down and five to go, Miss Allison. Did you ever try to carry a tuna fish? <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I always think of them as canned somehow, Bennett. Uh, if it is a fish... Uh, certainly would move around, but it must also be carried, must it not? Well, it, in, at some later state in its, its uh, 
Korea, it gets to be carried around, I would but, think, yeah. But, but as you're concerned with it, it it's, uh, it's moving. Yeah, it moves around, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Would, uh, would this product be found in a special container? No. No, that makes it six down and four to go. I'm going to give you another 40 seconds for this. See if you can name I'm it. I'm a stubborn fellow. I want to find out what kind of a job for the government Mrs. Warren does. Has this got something to do with the state fisheries, the hatcheries? The no. state fisheries and hatcheries? That's the dumbest thing again! <laughs> <laughs> well, do you work for the state government? The state no. government? No, no. no. that's eight down and two to go, Mr. Government. Lewis. You do not work for any government agency whatsoever, and yet it's a non-profit making organization. It's you are... Uh, I believe it was established there was no government work involved. Would you like to take this question and renew it? Because I we'd certainly be would. You work for some form of a government. <laughs> do you not? Yes. Is it a local government in Muscom... No. The local government is nine down and one to go, Miss Ellison. Are you, are you an inspector of some kind? No. Not an inspector. No, the assignment is more specific. It's 10 down and no more to go. And there are a lot of things to clear up. Now, Mrs. Warren works for the Corps of Engineers of the United States Army, which is, a, as you know, therefore, federal government. And she counts fish in the Columbia River as they go over the Bonneville Dam. <laughs> John, you made uh, that up. I didn't make it up, you know. I was just, I just had a horrible feeling when you got to the fish that you'd see that magazine story, but, you know, that we've all read about the fish Jumping things over. as they go over Bonneville and she they keep counts the on them so they can check the spawning route rates and that Warren, sort of thing. Do the Grace, fish have a demand to recount? <laughs> well, Mrs. Warren, thanks. You've been a wonderful challenger on the show, and we nice to see somebody all the way from Washington. I've enjoyed it so much. Thanks very much. Good night, ma'am. Good to see you. In just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends on the panel have blindfolds for this. Are they all in place, panel? Mm -hmm. yes. Good. Yes. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with uh, Robert Q. Lewis. Well, that was quite a reception, sir or madam. Good evening and welcome. Uh, am I safe in assuming that you are a member of the entertainment industry? I'll say yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you are obviously not American. No. Uh, <laughs> You are a uh, member, uh, you are, uh, may I, am I safe in, a, in uh, addressing you as sir, sir? No, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I was hoping so. Uh, are you perhaps uh, best known, or are you well known in the motion picture industry? That's a say yes. John, is that yes? Yeah, that's yes. Okay. Well, don't you understand Esperanto? <laughs> Do you, sir, have a film which is currently appearing in one of our major New York houses or about to appear? No. no. One down and nine to go, Miss Allison. <laughs> do you, uh, do you appear on television? Um, no. Uh, do you appear regularly in uh, your own show? Mm. I, I, I do. Um, <laughs> is this, uh... Is this show uh, a situation comedy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, I, I've heard this voice very recently. Uh, do I have the pleasure of knowing you personally? The... <laughs> yes. Uh, I thought you had gone back to Hollywood. Uh, are you, are you fortunate enough to have a very, very beautiful wife? Yes. Does she have a red sweater that I particularly adore? I think so. Were you sitting in the very front row of this theater at the show last Sunday night? Yes. 
Richard Powell. Dick, Dick Powell. Powell is right. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show, you know, we felt so sure that when you'd seen Dick here last week, you know, never put him on the show, and I was here last week, that you'd go looking all over the fields for somebody else. I don't suppose that lovely bride of yours is with you, because it would be awful nice if we could say hello to her. Yes, she is, John. She's could backstage with me. Yes, sir. Miss Joan. <laughs> Would you Maybe. please accept my thanks and say hello to the panel? It's wonderful to. to have had you both. We would love to. I would add only one final word. Of course, all of you know Brother Powell for many of his great talents. He's on CBS's Four Star Playhouse. But he is a particularly rich talent out of Hollywood because this is not only a very splendid actor, this is also a very fine producer and director. Now let's see what our panel can do with a final challenger. Would you sign in, please, sir? Jack, with a flourish. <laughs> Walt, with a flourish. How are you, Mr. Flourish? <laughs> very nice to see you. Jack, uh, where are you from? Patton, New Jersey. <clears throat> Trenton, New Jersey, will you take a look at the panel, because we're kind of short of time, and the panel, you take a look at Jack, and then, Jack, you come on over here with me, will you, please? Okay. Sit you down right here, and uh, we will actually uh, dispense even with the uh, wild guesses, I think, tonight, because we have so little time, and I want the panel to have a look, you know, a real go at you, so to speak, see? So uh, what we will do is just uh, let the viewers at home know what Mr. Jack Walsh does. Let them see what his occupation is, but the panel is going to have to guess game. Mr. Walsh, do you know how we score this here operation with these here cards? I sure do, John. All right, fine. Mr. Walsh is self-employed. Let's begin the general questioning with Miss Allison. Uh, Mr. Walsh, do you uh, perform a service of some kind? Yes. Is this uh, service one which uh, both men and women may avail themselves of? It sure is. Is, uh, is the service you do something... Uh, whereby people come to you for this? Yes. Are you, uh, do you work indoors? Yes. Is there uh, any special time uh, at which your services are more needed? I mean, is, is it a seasonal thing? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Surf, and we have just about a minute to go, so let's see what you can do. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Walsh, do you come into uh, actual physical contact with the people who come to you for this service? Uh, no. That makes it two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do they see you, though? Yes. You're visible. Do, do you speak to them or make any sort of noise? Does he mm. speak to them or make any sort of noise? <laughs> he breathes, don't make you? Noise. <laughs> but he, he doesn't make as a very vital and necessary part of his function, any noise, nor does he direct conversation specifically to audience. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Lewis. Uh, Mr. Walsh, do you require any special training for the type of work which you do? Yes. You do. Is there a certificate of some sort required in the work which you do? No. No certificate, but you do require rather special skills. That's what we meant to convey there. That's four down and six to go, Miss Allison, and 40 seconds to go. Uh, is there something uh, that... That, is this something that you do, something which people could not do for themselves? Oh, people could do this for themselves. Yes, sure. absolutely. Shucks, I do it every morning, practically, don't you? Uh, why? That's five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. One question. Uh, Mr. Walsh, do you teach or demonstrate anything? Uh, no. Uh, I would say this, but Mr. Walsh would forgive me. I would give a qualified yes on, on that whole grouped question of teach or demonstrate. Me. Yes. Well, would it be more demonstrate than teach? In a sense, and we rest ran out of time, so we'll flip all the rest of the cards. Mr. Walsh is a professional strong man, and the greatest official backlift record is his by elevating how many pounds? 4,235, John. Backlift. Thanks a lot for being our guest. Nice to have you with us. We'll be back in just...
And Dorothy Kilgallen goes back to Cleveland to cover the Shepherd case again. So until next week, once again, this is John Daly saying good reporting and good night, Miss Dorothy. Thank you, John. Good night, Bob. Awfully nice to have you again. Thanks, Dorothy. Our best to Kuklet Ollie. Good night, Fran. Thank you, Bob. Good night, Ben. We'll be watching for you tomorrow at 7 o'clock, Fran. Mm -hmm. Good night, John. And it's very nice to have you with us, Miss Fran. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line? <laughs> This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todd introduction. Association with the CBS Television Network. Mrs. Warren, tonight's contestant, was flown into New York from Washington State by United Airlines DC-7.